All right, in this tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice solving a system of equations by using the elimination method. Now, the first thing that we wanna do when using elimination is we wanna make sure that if we were to add the x terms together or the y terms, that that would result in zero, meaning that the two terms are opposite of each other. Now, sometimes you're gonna be given a system where the two terms are not opposite and you have to force them to be or sometimes they may give you a system like this where they give us some terms that are opposite. Like if we take a look at this equation here, we see we have a positive 4x, and in this one we have a negative 4x. So these are the easiest ones to do because they start off with two terms that will result in zero. So what we're gonna do right away is we are going to add like terms vertically. If we were to add 4x and negative 4x, or just say 4x minus 4x, that would result in zero. So we can just eliminate those x terms altogether. Now we just add this column here, we have positive 8y and positive 2y, which is 10y, and that's going to be equal to these constants added together, which is negative 10. Now, right off the bat, we can see that y must be equal to negative one, because that is the only thing we can multiply 10 by to get negative 10. So right away, we can say that our y value is equal to negative one. Now to figure out what the x value is, we have to plug negative one in for y into one of the two original equations. So let's just go ahead and take this first equation up here, which is four x plus eight y equals 20. And we know that y is equal to negative one, so what we're gonna do is substitute y with negative one, and then we're gonna isolate the x to figure out what it's equal to. So this is four x, and positive eight times negative one is negative eight is equal to 20. We're gonna take this constant here, and write it as its opposite on the other side. So we're gonna write plus eight over here. So that gives us 28 over on the right. And on the left, we have four X. And at this point, we can do a little mental math and understand that X is equal to seven because four times seven is 28. Now, if you want to, you can divide four on both sides to show work, but I prefer to do it mentally if possible. So X is equal to seven. So we would say that X is seven, and y is negative one. However, with the system of equations, we should write our answer as an ordered pair. Because each of these two equations represents a straight line that can be graphed on the coordinate plane. And these two lines would intersect precisely at the location positive seven, negative one, which is our answer to the system. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, now in this situation here, notice that we do not have opposite x terms, nor do we have opposite y terms. So what we're gonna do is force the situation. We are gonna manipulate this equation so that one of the two variables have coefficients that are opposite of each other. So let's take a look at these x's for instance. Three and five are not opposite integers. So what we have to do first is come up with a common multiple of three and five. And the lowest common multiple or least common multiple of these two numbers would be 15. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm going to group this entire side over here and this entire side over here. And what we have to do is figure out what would we multiply this coefficient to make 15? And the answer would be five. And down here, to turn this five into a 15, we would multiply it by three. Now, if we multiplied five by three, that would be positive 15, and this would be positive 15 down here as well. Those would still not be opposite. One of the two terms would have to be negative. So let's just go ahead and write a negative three here. It really doesn't matter which one, as long as they end up being opposite of each other. Now, notice that I grouped everything on the left side of our equation here, because all terms on this side will have to increase by the same factor. So because we're gonna increase this term by a factor of five, this term must increase by a factor of five as well. And because this is being increased by a factor of negative three, this term must be multiplied by negative three as well. Now remember, 
we must keep our equations balanced. So that means on this side, we have to multiply this number by 5, and we have to multiply this number by negative 3. So let's go ahead and rewrite this first equation here. So we have 5 times 3x, which is 15x, and we have 5 times negative 2y, which is negative 10y, is equal to 2 times 5, which is 10. Now for this equation, we're going to multiply negative 3 times 5x, which is negative 15x, and negative 3 times negative 5y, which is positive 15y, and that is going to be equal to negative 30, because 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. All right, now we have a system where we have opposite terms here. So we can go ahead and eliminate these x terms, because 15x minus 15x is, of course, 0. So let's just eliminate those. Now, if we combine these y terms, we would have positive 5y is equal to positive 10 and negative 30, which is negative 20. And the only thing y could be in this situation would be negative 4, because negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. So we know that y is negative 4. Now that we know that y is negative 4, we're going to go ahead and substitute that in for y into one of the two original equations. So let's go ahead and take this first equation up here. 3x minus 2y. But instead of y, we're going to multiply 2 by negative 4 because we know that y is equal to negative 4 and set that equal to 2. All right, so we're going to simplify this a bit. 3x, negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 is equal to 2. And I'm going to take this constant of positive 8 and write it as its inverse on the other side, minus 8. And 2 minus 8 is negative 6. And we're going to slide this 3x down and then divide both sides by the coefficient of positive 3. And that's going to give us x equals negative 2. So we would say that the point of intersection between these two lines would be negative 2 and negative 4. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. All right, let's take a look at this system here. Now, notice that we do not have the x terms lined up in a column or the constants lined up in a column. Everything's kind of all over the place here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite each equation first. So we have the x terms lined up, the y terms lined up, and the constants lined up. So here's what we're going to do first. I like to have the x terms written first. So if we take a look at this first equation here, our x term is second. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this constant. Remember, a constant is just a number that is not being multiplied by a variable. It's a number just kind of by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this positive 3 and write it on the other side of our equation as minus 3. Now notice we have our x term first, our y term next, and our constant, although we still have to rewrite this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be 2x minus y equals 0 minus 3, which is, of course, negative 3. All right, now let's take a look at this equation right here. So we have our constant over here on the left, which is negative 3. So we're going to move it on the other side as its inverse. Remember, whenever you're moving a constant on the or any term on the other side of your equal sign, you must write it as its inverse. So we're going to write positive 3 on this side. However, I want to have this x term written at the beginning of my equation, and the opposite of positive 10x is negative 10x. So let's go ahead and rewrite this under this equation. So we have negative 10x minus 7y equals positive 3. All right, now what we have to do is rewrite the equation so that either the x terms are opposite, so they have a sum of 0, 
or the y's are opposite. Now in this case, I'm gonna concentrate on the x's because we can see that at least the signs are opposite. So all we have to do is find a common multiple of two and 10. Now, if the smaller of the two coefficients fits equally into the other one, I like to make sure that that coefficient is whatever the larger one is. Because two can fit equally into 10, we are just going to increase this two by a factor of five. So we will not have to do anything to this term right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply everything on this side of our equal sign by five. And then we're gonna multiply everything on this side by five as well. So let's go ahead and distribute this five here. We have five times two X, which is equal to 10 X and then five times negative y, which is negative five y, is equal to negative three times five, which is negative 15. And then we can just take our second equation here and write it under our first equation. Negative 10 x minus seven y equals positive three. Okay, so let's go ahead and add all of our columns up. We can eliminate our x terms because they have a sum of zero. The y terms have a sum of negative 12y, and we're gonna set that equal to negative 12. And y must equal positive one in this case, because the only thing we can multiply negative 12 by to have a result of negative 12 would be one. Um, if you feel more comfortable, of course, you can divide both sides by that coefficient of negative 12. So y would be equal to negative 12 divided by negative 12, which is positive one. All right, now that we know what one of our two variables is, and it's the y in this case, we're going to substitute one in for y into one of the original equations. So let's take our first equation, which was three plus 2x minus y, but instead of y, we're gonna substitute that with positive one and set that equal to zero. All right, so let's combine these two constants here of three and negative one. Three minus one is two, so we can rewrite this as two plus two x equals zero. And then we can take this constant and write it on the other side as its inverse. So we're gonna take this positive two and write minus two on the other side. So now we have the equation two x is equal to zero minus two, which is negative two. And then if we divide both sides by the coefficient of two, that would give us x equals negative one. So we would say that the point of intersection between these two linear equations would be negative one and positive one. Hey, I just wanna say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and enable notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials to my math channel. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math. Thank you.